Let's talk to Robin in DC. Robin, you're live with Eric and V. What would you like to talk about today? Hi, so I'm calling to to see if if your atheism is rational. I'm just curious about. Okay, how do you? Rational, uh, yeah, how do you define rational? That way, we're talking about the same thing. Uh, if it's if if your predications, if you're speaking, if you're speaking intelligibly, if they're able to be understood, if you're able to make sense of the world, uh, given that you do not believe in God. Okay. So as honest interlocutors, right, as, as um, charitable listening goes, you assume the best out of your, your interlocutor. Um, so how would you approach this? Are, are, it sounds like you're wanting to make the case that being an atheist is irrational. Well, I, I would ask you if you have, well, okay, well, we could, we could start, okay, um, just by understanding, I, I want to understand. So d do you believe it is necessary Okay, to acknowledge God, and I'll let me define God first before before we start. Uh, okay, God. That actually helps. Discussion would be would be defined as um, that which is the ultimate necessary cause and grounds for all temporal states of affairs, and is a mind. He's an agent. Okay, he he is self conscious. He's aware of himself. Okay. Okay. Um, so now, do, do I have to believe? do I have to accept something to acknowledge it? Like I, I can acknowledge that that thought that, I'm, that you I'm just might defining be. a term. Okay. Well, well, no, I, well, what, what that is. Okay. I, I'm, I'm just. I'm not asking I'm, you to say you accept it exists right now. Sure. I, I, I'm just. I'm asking because you were asking if we need to acknowledge that at all. And so I was kind of moving forward no, and going, well, in order for us to acknowledge, do you mean acknowledge that you believe it or that we accept it? I, I don't understand. Yeah. Well, so the question I was going to ask before. So, yeah, the question, now yeah, that we have ahead. the definition of mind, the, the follow up question would be, um, now, do do you believe now that it is necessary to reference God as He's just been defined for the actuality of of all temporal states of affairs? No, no. Then that entails, okay, the falsity of God in your worldview. Well, so the 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 falsity of your definition. Well, not okay. even the falsity. Yeah. Just I don't see a need for it. Yeah, like it, it could be true. Well, it could okay, it might well, not be true. But like in my own worldview. I don't see a need for it in order for me to be rational. And I actually can go a step further and say that I, I think it's impossible to have a mind without a brain. And so unless you okay. can point to or like a temporal body that that God is inhabiting, then I would say that my I, I, I stop accepting that when you tell me that a mind exists without a brain. Okay. Do you um, see what I mean? Like, like, like I mean, because okay. well, you, wanna, you, you did two things. That. We can address the mind, mind brain sure. thing. We can address that in a second. But, but I want to like address the main thing that she was that she that both of you guys kind of responded to it. it the, the entailment, um, as he's been defined. Okay, God cannot exist in a world where facts can be invoked. Okay, independent of him. Okay, the worldview that 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 you now have have made clear. Mm -hmm. is that facts stand independent of God and God yeah, exists in such a world as he's been defined. I, I got you. That's circular. In the context of this discussion. Robin, that, that, that's, that's a circular, circular argument. Logical entailment. Well, no, Robin, entailment. Robin, let me, let me put it this way, right? I'm going to define Robin as the person who's on this call and who is, who necessarily exists. And now, since I have defined you as having ne necessarily existing, then those those things wouldn't click, right? That, that I, I, it totally makes sense to go. Okay, based on that definition, Robin has to exist. Right. And, this is my problem with the entirety of the no, modal that's ontological that's argument, which is what sounds like you're saying. Not, it sounds like you're referencing the modal ontological argument. Is that true? God being a necessary being, having to exist as a necessary part of this particular universe, as part of all universes, all of that. Yeah, well, I, I'm not. I'm not defining. Okay, such a being into existence. Okay, that's what the modal ontological argument does. It's a circular. It's a. It's a I'm, circular I'm, argument. I'm, I'm just explaining what I'm telling you. I'm just explaining. Okay. We're, we're doing our best to understand you, and 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 I'm glad we're having this back and forth that we're listening and and, and engaging with each other. That that's good. I I I, I do agree with V though. Um, do you define God as necessarily existing? I'm not I'm, okay. In 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 the in the discussions about worldview, okay. 
whatever world you hold to, if you hold to an ultimate uh, being or any, any sort of ultimate foundational. Uh, I'd be happy to talk about that. I just want to clarify what we were talking about first. We can move to that. But first, let, I, I, do, I want to ask, do you define God as necessarily existing in, in his? That's part of his character. That's part of his character set. Initially. Okay. But the, okay. let me, let me, let me no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I really want to draw attention to this because you tripped there. I'm literally going to address that. That's what, that's what I, I was starting to address, that, that very issue, okay? Oh, when, go ahead. In a worldview, yes, in, in a worldview, if, if whoever, whatever worldview you hold to, okay? I'm not asking, first of all, I'm not asking you to accept that God exists, but whatever worldview you hold to, if you hold to something that is foundational, in order for you to have intelligibility, such a foundation will need to necessarily exist. Okay. I, so I, again, again, I, I, I don't care. Hold on. That does not answer the question. You said it would, so I listened, and it didn't. So let's let's try this again. I, let's 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 draw. Let's go, Robin. Do you have a problem with me asking and V asking for clarification when we want it? Because if you do, if you got a problem with it, you can call another show. I was in the middle of clarifying, but go ahead. Okay. So do you said you define God or in the definition in the nature of God? It's necessarily existing, right? That is def the definition of God. That's your definition. Okay, cool. Um, by that definition, you have worked yourself into a circle, and it goes like this. God necessarily exists in, in his definition. Does God exist? Well, God necessarily exists in their definition. You're checking back on it as its own source to verify itself. It is a circular argument that makes no sense to us. Well, no, 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 no. This is a distinction that needs to be made here, okay? One, hmm. defining a term. I'm not saying that God exists. I am saying in a world where God exists, he would necessarily exist. Okay. Okay. Where God does not exist, Ooh, he would not that's exist. That's perfect. No, okay. it's not. Okay. It, it, no, no. It, it, it's modal on its face. It is. It is. In a world where a necessary God exists, a necessary God would exist. How is that not circular? In a, in a, in a world where an unnecessary God exists, an unnecessary God would exist. There is no, you're not making anything except for a claim that you think that this is a universe in which a God that meets your criteria exists. Therefore, that God exists because it meets your criteria. No, that's not, that's, I, first of all, I haven't made a claim as to whether the God exists or not. I, no, I, no, in the definition, it's making the claim. That's, that's the thing, it's built in. Do you not understand what necessary means in this context? Means, but By saying God is necessary, you are making the claim that God exists, at least in the world you're trying to tie us to. And in, in, in all possible universes, by saying it's necessary, you're saying that in all possible universes, God needs to exist in the same way that all circles need to be around in all possible universes. That, that's not at all what I'm saying, and I, I explained this already. Listen, in a world where, where God exists, he would exist necessarily. That doesn't necessarily follow Okay, that okay. does okay. Exist. Okay. Uh, let, 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 let's try a different tack then, because I've got I've got one more for you. Because whatever world you okay, hold on. Robin, whatever you hold to Robin fundamental in order for you to have intelligence. Robin, you need to exist necessarily. That isn't okay. Okay. I, I I hear you. I'm asking. Uh, so I'm setting that down, and I'm going to pick up another piece of this. Is existence an attribute that you can give something? Like I have curly hair. V has blue eyes. Um, th those are attributes that you're using to describe us. Is there a difference between Eric having curly hair and Eric having curly hair that exists? Yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the existence is what I'm saying right now. It is not an attribute you can give something. Okay. No. Does that, does that make sense? And what I, what, no, because I'm talking about necessity. Okay. In, in you're, 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 you're talking about necessity in reference to existence. We're talking about existence, right? Yeah, I, you're, you're not. Because we understand we understand necessity. We're right there with you, man. I promise. We're we're we're, we're chugging along. We're listening. We're just making sure that, that we're, we're chewing through. That might actually be the problem. Is that we're we understand sure. necessary existence. Okay. But, yeah. So, so yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, so existence. Let's let's. What's the problem with what I said? The, there, the problem is that you are saying, hey, if your worldview is going to be consistent, you need a consistent worldview. Okay. Cool. Our worldview is not your worldview. 
So, of course, what we are talking about is not going to sound rational to you. And, of course, what you're talking about is not going to sound rational to us based on your criteria. So, I'm confused about why we're even having this conversation. If your definition of rational is, well, your rationality has to be intelligible based on your worldview, cool. We're rational to us. You're irrational to us. You're rational to you. We're irrational to you. How is that helpful with this conversation? Because because you're making assumptions about what I'm going to say, and you're making assumptions about things that I haven't said. Okay. Okay. I, I, I we are trying very hard to understand you. So I, 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 I don't think we're bringing in anything that you haven't said. Uh, so I I want you to imagine an apple. My worldview, and I haven't I haven't give you I have you're making assumptions about my worldview, and I haven't I, told you what my worldview is. I, I actually I'm I'm so we're just de dealing with what you told us already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So I'm not I'm not assuming your worldview when I ask you what you think about existence. People who are who are watching this going, what the heck are they talking about? Please let me let me explain. So in this kind of argument, what's being set up here is and the way that uh, V said that is 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 something that is defined as necessary. And so because it's necessary. It's necessary and it backs around on itself. But even if we were to take that out, the idea that existence is an attribute that you can give something is nonsensical, right? You need something that exists in order to give it attributes, right? Yes. So, so I, I want you to imagine for me the opposite. Can you give attributes to something that does not exist? No, it's necessity is part of, of, it, of its character set. Okay. I so, so I, can you define necessity for us, Robin? What yeah. do you mean when you say necessity? Because we clearly have one version of it. Maybe we're just using the word differently. It, that its falsity is impossible. So right. it exists in the worldview. So no, okay. Yes, this, this, yes, exactly. To, yes. Three times. <laughs> no, it doesn't mean that it exists because you hold to its necessity. I'm saying that in a, and if you hold to a worldview that such a God exists, it would necessarily exist. Now we're talking- Right, how is that not circular? I haven't made a claim, so it can't be circular. You, you made the claim. You said, if you hold to a worldview where a necessary God exists, then a necessary God exists. That is a claim. I'm not saying it's your claim, but you made a claim and it is circular. Yeah, I'm explaining to you the, the attributes are you going to explain how it's circular and how it's a stupid claim? And how existence is not an attribute or is an attribute? All, all, all I'm doing is explaining is explaining what what worldview, okay, God would fall into and how he would relate to the worldview. Because because you're conflating a, a worldview somebody has with what actually is going on in the world. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that what you're doing is making a category error. I'm saying that worldview is circular, regardless of whether or not it is accurate. If you think that a necessary God exists because a necessary God exists, then that is a circular worldview and is not rational. So why are you bringing it into this conversation about rationality? I tell you what I think. I didn't tell you what I think. You're saying I, if I think that the God exists because, again... Okay, okay. Then, th then we'll go like this. We're going to dispute your definition of God. If you think this conversation is going to be useful, given that we don't agree with your definition of God, go for it. Um, you, don't, you don't agree with the definition? Uh, the word definition. You don't agree. No. No, no. Because you're, you're giving a tautology and then trying not to respond to it. So... Uh, somebody in the live chat actually had a really, really great uh, uh, statement. They were saying that fictional characters can have attributes, right? The book that that fictional character is in exists. The fundamental error is here in the discussion. I think I see what the error is, okay? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, 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 I just, I, I want to respond to this just so that people who are watching later can understand where the disconnect is because I apparently did not communicate something as well as I should have. Okay, Robin? Okay, just give me ahead. just a second. Okay, cool. So if I'm talking about a fictional character, that character may not exist as a person, but they exist as a character in a book, right? If when I'm talking about non-existence, I'm talking about something without shape, without concept, something that is not described in a book, something that is not illustrated, it is non-existent. And so for me to put attributes like height or weight or sentience or or anything like that onto 
non-existence. You can't do it. Existence is what you map traits onto. Existence itself is not a trait. It is a prerequisite for traits. And so when you're saying necessary, we're, 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 we're arguing the existence part. And so okay. if you want to talk about necessary, we can get into necessary. And, and that's what V argued, right? V's argument was it's not necessary because it's circular. Okay. Well, I think I, I think I see where the error is, or the, where the fundamental disconnect is here. Okay, go ahead. When I define a term, okay, I'm not saying that it exists, right? I could define what Superman is, but I'm not saying that Superman exists, okay? So when I say it's necessary, that is part of its attribute set, I am saying that, that that's all I'm saying. It's, it's part of its attribute set. That doesn't mean, okay, that it exists. That's not what I'm, that's not the case I'm making at the moment, okay? All okay. I'm, so the only the only thing you could object to is if I'm is, is if in the definition I am contradicting myself in some way. Is there some? Well, okay. here's the here's the thing. I, I I understand what you're going where you're going with this, and I agree. I think that we need to define terms. We're not all always tying ourselves to those terms as things we endorse. I get it. But the when you formulate an argument, when you're having a, a debate with somebody, you are presenting evidence. You're presenting elements that you want to use within that argument. If the other person doesn't raise an issue, you can continue using those words, those arguments, those definitions. We are saying we do not want to allow a necessary being into this argument at all because it is circular and irrational. If we talk about it hypothetically as an example, it's going to muddy the water and it's going to make it more difficult to get our points across. So we're saying we get that you're presenting this hypothetical necessary God as an example for something we're going to talk about later. We don't want to use that example in here. We're not okay with you entering that into the argument because it is circular. Does that make sense? That's where we're coming from. Yeah. So, so, so do you hold to anything that is fundamental? Okay. In reality, that will be the cause and grounds of all temporal states of affairs and all possibility and impossibility. Is there Got it. You view regard to this worldview that is fundamental and foundational that will come. Absolutely. Uh, so I think that what um, Robin is doing, Robin, I think what you're doing is you're saying that you need to hold the speaking stick. And as long as you hold the speaking stick, then you can talk. And the idea that we're unable to talk as long as we're not holding the speaking stick doesn't make any sense to you. I get that. You're saying that you have a prerequisite, that you are you have to have this concept that is responsible for exactly what you said in order to make sense of the world. I don't think that's true. I think you need a voice. You don't necessarily need a speaking stick. And so I'm going to point that out and say... Those are claims, and we could unpack that, unpack actually how that... You're just saying that now. So, so now do you... Wow! Welcome to the conversation. Now we're both saying things. Okay, cool. Let's back it up. Absolutely. So what is necessary to make sense? Like, what do we need to make sense of the world around us? Well, well, it depends on the worldview you have. So that's why I'm asking you now, as an atheist, do you hold to anything that is foundational and fundamental that will be the cause and grounds of all temporal states of affairs and impossibility and Im or possibility and impossibility? Is there anything fundamental and foundational in your worldview that will account for that? Got it. You, uh, you, you just packaged in a big bullshit statement into that. It's like saying, hey, Robin, when did you stop beating your wife? Have you stopped beating your wife today? No. Yes. No. Oh, wait a second. You, right. You, you're, you're encapsulating a bullshit argument in there that I don't want to let go. I'm a dog with a bone on this and I am not going to let it go. And that idea is that you need that. I don't need to account for that the way you're saying that, right? A, a, a foundational fundamental principle upon which everything else, uh, it, it's, I, I don't think that's the case. And so for so you to say, do you have this because this is necessary? No, 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 no. Show me that it's necessary first, and then we can talk about what we have. Okay. So you don't believe that such a, such a thing is even needed in, in reality. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Not as you have defined it just no. now, no. Okay. All right. Um, is, is anything impossible in the worldview? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you cannot have a square circle. Um, and what would secure and sustain that? So, by definition, circles are round. So, okay. You, in, in the same way that you can't have married bachelors, 
and you cannot have square circles, right? Those are yeah. necessary. Those are necessary statements and have to be true in all possible universes. I'm using your language here, right? I'm giving you an example of something that is necessary. Circles are round. You cannot have a square circle. So you're saying that con contradictions cannot be? Well, that's the laws of logic. So saying contradictions cannot be actually opens the door to a lot of weird stuff. So let's be super, super clear. A thing cannot be what it is and not what it is at the same time. Okay. And what is it that will secure? That's, that's, that's the non-contradiction, right? Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So that, that's, again, what, what, what secures and sustains that that's actually the case. Okay. And again, Our I'm going to say both. thus far. Well, and, 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 and honestly, I don't even. I, what secures? Yeah. What Why secures and sustains it? it? That's, that's the bullshit argument that's built in. The thing that justifies us saying that and making this a rule by which we live is the fact that it has not yet been proven to not be true. That said, you're you're not focusing. You're that said, what? I asked you a question. I didn't make an argument to you. I asked you a question. Do we believe something secures and sustains? No. Uh, so so I, again, I don't think yes or no is a good answer. I think that's a bullshit question. Ask the question Fair. one more time because what I'm looking for is the implicit assumption that something is necessary to secure and sustain uh, your your reality. So go ahead. I'm, I'm I'm listening for it. Let me see. Okay. Do so. So you do you believe that anything is necessary to secure and sustain the truthfulness of what you just said about contradictions? The truth and that's such a weird. Like this is this is why that's this is why language. philosophy is a thing and why science is cool because you use a word to describe a thing. Reading. And then you don't get into this muddy, like theological language of truth yeah, and fullness. Yeah. What does that mean? Okay, so get rid of the fullness part, right? Let's let's go a or not a, so that we can actually determine what this is. Let's break it down. The truth of a thing, I I I go by the correspondence theory of truth. That which corresponds to reality is true. How do I how do I understand that? I do my best to check what it whatever it is against reality to find out whether or not it's true. What do you do, Robin? How do you determine whether or not something is true? So I want to be clear before I, before I address your question. You, sure. you observe things, okay, and you determine whether or not they are in coherence with reality or in correspondence. Sorry. Correspondence, yeah. I, I, that, that's, that's what I go with, yeah. What do you go with? How do you define something as true? In order for you... In order, in order for you to... Robin, I just asked you a question. I'll be happy to answer yours. You need to answer mine. How do you determine something is true? Yeah, that which is true is that which will conform and comport with the mind of God. As he is okay, our... prove that God exists and prove that God has a mind. Otherwise, you're making a ridiculous claim that you need to make a ton of assumptions for. And those assumptions... Okay. are called presuppositions. People who are watching, if you want to know what presuppositionalism or what a presuppositional argument is, please remember that on March 7th, Robin called. And You can probably find a better version elsewhere, to be honest. Honestly, I don't think better versions... Well, no, I had a presup on my, my channel. There were... Um, this is the problem with presupp presuppositionalism. It's billed to the average Christian who wants to defend their faith as super easy to do. And then you butcher it and yeah. it becomes really stupid sounding, which Whoa. is a good thing because then it shows everybody else how stupid it is. Yeah. So thank you, Robin, but it's stupid. I haven't, called you, I, haven't called you, I haven't called you stupid. and you haven't We didn't call you stupid either, Robin. We call the argument stupid. Yep. Are Two you different your things. argument? No, you're not. Okay. We think that you can do better than that. Okay. See, see, see to, to, to jump in and say, I'm the only one who can logic and I'm the only one who can reason. And until you accept that I'm right, I'm not even going to let you into the clubhouse. You're not going to be able to sit at the table with me. It, it, it is it is the intellectual equivalent of plugging your ears and saying, la, la, la. It almost sounds like you might be calling us stupid. Uh, honestly, <laughs> it, 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 that's 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 the argument is is you cannot make sense of things without understanding God. That is the pre-sop argument. Is it not, Robin? Um, I, I didn't call you stupid. You called me stupid. No, I called your argument stupid. You're evading all the all the while. You're evading the questions I ask you. Is your argument? Is your argument what I said, Robin? Distracting. You're shifting the topic. 
Robin. And I haven't my done. fucking show. Okay. If you don't want to deal with it, I'll hang the fuck up on you. No, I, I don't care. I'm just answer. You're, you're, Three, you're calling two. Me. Are you gonna? Oh, right. oh, no. Okay. Oh, oh. See, that's what happens, Robin. Robin, if you think that you are holding the moral high ground because you're being shitty. That's not the case. I asked you a question. Just because you didn't want to answer it doesn't mean that I'm being combative. The fact is, when you're going to do that, you're doing a number of things that disqualify you from conversation with us. One, you're being a dishonest interlocutor because you're carrying things in here and making assumptions about us without even giving us the benefit of the doubt. I didn't call you stupid. I just said that you can't logic or use rationality. Number two, you're characterized like... There are so many pieces in there that are absolutely wrong. So, Robin, please, please, if you're if you if you think it is a fantastic trick to, to gather everyone around so you can stick your head up your own ass, don't waste our time doing it here. 